everywhere. Uh, were you okay chaotic and stuff, so it's cool. Which you'd kind of figure. Yeah. I have a question. I know that this has happened before with, uh, with uh, Slayer, it happened with Suicidal. There were a lot of venues that wouldn't let bands play, that said, we're not gonna let this kind of band play because the audience goes crazy or people are gonna get hurt. Have you guys had any of those problems at certain shows? Well, we try not to play in those venues, you know. Uh, whenever some uh, comes a situation to play in a place like with seats and stuff like that, we try to avoid. Mm -hmm. We always go for the place with no seats and uh, that they use to shows like that so people can enjoy the show with freedom. Because you know, have you, ever have you ever played a show where everybody's had to sit in their seats? Yeah, the That's ministry sweet. tour and I got really pissed off and the, the, it was kind of like a riot going on and I, I got mad and I stage dive after the show just to prove them that, you know. I was well, there. I think, I, think were, I was at that, yeah. was it in New York? And the, the bouncer like I was there, I was at that show. me and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that was a festive show. <laughs> so I promised New York I was, we were going to get back in a this, decent venue. I was at that we show. Just did it. Okay, we're going to come back, talk to Sepultura for our Christmas edition. But right now, we're going to play Territory from Sepultura, and we'll come back, talk about the video, did the mud wash out, all that stuff. Stay tuned. More Headbangers Ball. Um, we just played the video for Territory. Anything? Where, tell me where did that film? Because it looks like you guys went to a bunch of wild places for that Israel. video. It's all done there in two days. Uh, it was cool, we did... Uh, Got to play in the mud. Yeah, it was like, we, did, we wanted to do a kind of a different video without the instruments and like the normal video that everybody kind of put out. So talking with the director, Paul Rackman, we came out with these crazy ideas of... No relation to me. Uh, <laughs> we doing like mud on the Dead Sea in our face and uh, just like kind of like hanging around in the Masada where the, the a lot of like history incidents happened in the past, so it's cool. One thing I want to mention, because being your lyrics and also talking to you on other times, you guys seem to know a lot about history and different cultures, and I know also when we've talked to other bands from other countries, they seem to know a lot. Does it seem to you like people when they're from other countries, since you've traveled around the world, that the kids know more about history and culture than the American kids, do you know what I mean? Because um, it seems like you guys know a lot about history and, and stuff like that, as, as well, well as a lot of... You we know. we kind of, we got an interest by the subject, so we read about it and we like to travel, you know, we like to be on tour and play in the most bizarre places like Russia and Indonesia and we did And you already. played there. Yeah, and we're going to do even more in the future. But it's just, it's, I think it's a little bit, a little bit America's like more concentrate only in America, you right. know. I think that comes from school, as far as like talking to people yeah. here. You know, in school they already passed the idea you first study America and then the rest of the world. Yeah, and in true. Brazil we study kind of like we always study everything like around us and stuff. Okay, we'll come back and talk to more Sepultura as the Headbangers Ball continues. Screen. Merry Christmas, back on the Headbangers Ball with Sepultura. And that I've noticed talking to you because we've been, you know, seeing each other on the show for about about a year, two years now. And your English has gotten progressively better and better and better because now you're also living in America. Yeah. What about you? I got a house in Arizona. Uh-huh. So, now, now, this is, um, like, because it's Christmas right now, I'm just curious. In Brazil, how is, because that's where the whole band is originally from, is Christmas any different in Brazil? Yeah, Santa Claus, is a Speedo. <laughs> it's just summer right now. Then. Oh, that's right. So you, when the, since the seasons are opposite, it, we don't it's hot. Right yeah. But right. do they still do the same thing with the Christmas trees and the opening yeah, yeah, presents? Yeah, and yeah. 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 It's pretty much the same all over the world. Pretty much the same kind of stuff. Now, one thing that's interesting about Sepultura that maybe a lot of people don't know, you hear the stories about coming from the bottom and kind of working your way up. Sepultura really did that, right? Uh, yeah, it's, we never got worried about going the way up, really. We, but when you start, I mean, you guys started as, a, you know, guys playing small clubs, yeah. you know, not with much money and just kind of scratching your way to the surface. Yeah, we just nothing. enjoy it. You know. Huh? Pretty much nothing. Uh huh. We just, just like really enjoying the what we want. Uh, we like the music a lot, and uh, the whole thing, you know, hanging with our friends and stuff. It just became a bigger thing. We have like you now two thousand friends that go to the show now, you know, instead of twenty or ten. Right. But it's still the same feeling. The know? other thing about you guys in Brazil. Um, when MTV did the Video Music Awards, I guess it was probably about two years ago, and every country voted for their favorite band, and here might have been a Janet Jackson, or over there might have been a Duran Duran or something. In Brazil, the band was Sepultura that won the Viewer's Choice Awards, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty, so you guys are real big over there. It was, it was weird, because we're the, the worst band there when we first started. <laughs> Everybody hated us, wanted to kill us, and they said we couldn't play and all that. 
And then the, the years have gone by, we start touring outside Brazil and they wake up, all of a sudden, next thing we know, we're like heroes or whatever. And those same there. people, I always like this band. Yeah, yeah pretty we're much. We're gonna be like back that. talking to Sepultura, but right now we're gonna play a video from Rage Against the Machine, a band that is always uh, kind of stood up for the things they believe in and their points. And this is Freedom from Rage Against the Machine. With only eight dates? Yeah. And has it been expanded? So, I mean, what are some of the upcoming shows that we're going to see, like, towards... We have towards two left. We're actually, they'll be gone by now, because yeah. it's gone on Christmas, which is San Francisco and L.A. We go into Brazil in January to play a festival called Hollywood Rock. Does that, now, this is a big festival. How many people it's are we talking about? It's not as big as Rock in Rio, but it's like 50,000. 50? 50. Yeah. So that's still Robert Plant's grouping. headlining the night we're playing. It's, Robert Plant and Sepultura. That should be fun. <laughs> what other bands are playing? <laughs> uh... There's Ugly Kid Joe, I guess, yeah. the same night, and another Brazilian band. Uh huh. This will be pretty interesting. Let's talk about the record Chaos AD, which, when it was released, entered the Billboard charts at number 32, which is pretty good. Yeah, we thought so. I mean, I mean, this is something that that doesn't usually happen with some, with a very heavy type band. Yeah, it, it, we were surprised pretty much everywhere, in Europe and in... in How Europe did the record do over in Europe? Very good, too. Where would you say the, the majority of the Sepultura fans, do you have a bigger fan base in Brazil or right now in America? Because, I mean, the, uh, everybody's really I getting into it. I think right now, out here. in Europe, is probably the, the place that people know us more and uh, the show's been bigger there. And I think in the U.S., by debuting number 32, and because we tour here a lot, and we've been really working our fan base here for a long time. And it should be a good year for us next year and have uh, pretty cool tours and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Any bands that you've heard talked about for you guys going out on the road with? Uh, we like to try out and try to go out with Clutch if you can, because we I like, really them. like them. Yeah, same here. And there's, you know, we've pretty much you knows a lot of these new bands and stuff. Fear Factory, Biohazard. A lot of other bands are friends of ours and really good bands too. So we, we're going to try to work out something good with those bands. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the record, especially some of the subjects that are uh, spoke about or sung about on the uh, new Sepultura record. So stay tuned, we got more Headbangers Ball with Sepultura. Ball, if you will, our guests this evening are Sepultura. The new record is called Chaos AD. It's out in your stores now if you haven't uh, checked it out. And a couple people you got to write with. I'm like a big old time Dead Kennedys fan. I know you got to work with Jello yeah. on uh, what it was a Biotech is Godzilla. Yeah. He co wrote with you. How did that come about? He wrote the whole lyrics for. Uh, we, we know him from Brazil when he went there last year with Paul from Ministry. Uh -huh. And we kind of hooked up a band together. I actually didn't play, but Igor and Andreas. Uh, they put a band together and Jealous Sing, they did two shows. Oh, really? All with Dead Kennedys and Large songs. Oh, I love really Large. really cool. Igor yeah. have on video. It, it looks really, really cool. Really? I didn't see that. I didn't even know. And then after that, uh, Igor kept giving me the idea, why don't you call Jello and ask him to do a lyric? Because we really loved his lyrics and mm -hmm. his style and stuff. So I called him up from the studio in England. And it was really, you know, real fast. I just called him like, are you mean to do a lyrics for us? And he got totally um, into it. and. Uh, in two days, he wrote the lyrics, whatever, and sent, faxed me back. And he, he came with the whole thing, the idea of biotech is Godzilla and the whole concept. Mm -hmm. And I just and I know you them. also worked with Evan from Biohazard. That was a little different. That was they play in, in Phoenix, and apparently he lost. He didn't went to the bus, and he stayed in Phoenix. So he ended That's up uh, staying in Paula's house. And the next day, he came to my house, and we just wrote a bunch of stuff just mm -hmm. to kill time. He went to the practice pad and... Jam for a little bit. Yeah, and start singing the songs over while we were writing. And we end up using some of his stuff. I call him up to say, I'm using some of your stuff, man. Uh, just put and the Anytime credits. you guys want to miss a buzz, tell me. <laughs> okay, we're also going to find out uh, about the, the story of the song, Kiowas, uh, when the Headbangers Ball continues. But right now, let's play a video from Sepultura. Do you want to intro this? This is Desperate Cry, live in Barcelona. Songs with powerful messages like Kiowas. Tell me a little bit about that song, uh, there's some history behind it. That's a tribe from the rainforest that suicide, the whole tribe killed themselves and in form of protest because the government is trying to change them, you know, and <clears throat> uh, turn them into normal people, what they call in, in Brazil, you know, kind of like still going on today. But this uh, 
tribe, yeah, they just decided just to suicide instead of give up. So, so rather than to really, conform to society, yeah. the entire tribe yeah. so it was a really, killed themselves. I thought it was a really strong thing, and I just decided it's, there's no lyrics; it's like instrumental. Mm -hmm. But on the on the album, it says what it's about. Right. So you know, people can think a little bit of it. Do you think people do listen to the songs and maybe? I sort hope, of. I mean, man. everybody likes to talk about that heavy metal when there's a song that talks about suicide. It's so negative. It's so negative. But then there's certain songs that you write about things that are very important, and nobody ever comments about that and says, "Oh, Sepultura is writing songs well, about this." Do you they, only see, they only see the negative side of it. You know, most of the society and a lot of people outside there, they don't really see the good points. And when they see that, they don't talk about it. And I hope people uh, spend some of the time trying to understand what we do in other bands that have good lyrics too, mm -hmm. and something like a message or whatever to the people. Because you know we spend a lot of our time writing those lyrics. It's not like we just put in a paper in five minutes. You know, right. I actually spend a lot of time reading and stuff and searching for uh, interesting things to talk about it. Mm. Okay, we're gonna be back with more Sepultura. But right now, let's play a video from some guys that played live here. Right, matter of fact literally here on the uh, set and a lot of people written and said that they'd like us to have more bands play live which I agree. This is Fight with Little Crazy. Then being new stuff, tell me some of the differences that people if, they, if they've only got the uh, earlier supple tourist stuff are gonna notice right away when they pick this up. <coughs> uh, I think in my opinion it's way more tighter and more aggressive. We kinda like slow down on the speed but in order to feel that, that void of the slowing down. We have like way more aggressive songs and they've been working really good live. The mix of those new songs live with the old ones work really cool. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty satisfied with. How many of these songs are you playing live right now? Uh, well, almost five. all of them besides the Manifest and Kaiovas that we didn't really introduce the yet. To the and The Hunt, yeah, which is a cover. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what, are there any kind of stuff, like what stuff are you guys listening to? Because there's like so much music coming out right now in so many different styles. I mean, is there anything that you guys That's hard, hear man. out there that you Lots. really like? Everything. <laughs> now, anything weird? Like, there'd be a type of music that people wouldn't think you guys would also be into? Uh, than maybe metal? John Zorn. Jack, Jaco Pastores, that's how I listen to oh, yeah. it. It's a jazz bass player. Uh -huh. uh, so, that uh, can dance, stuff right. like that. That's like people probably don't know that we're listening to. Yeah. I heard them. They sound sort of like the Doors ish. Yeah, uh, it's weird. Of, sort of weird stuff. Okay, we're going to be back with uh, more Headbangers Ball, and we've got a flashback. Whoa. When the show continues. In America next year. So that'll be kind of going home when you go back to play Brazil, right? Yeah. All right. It's a cool feeling. Well, thanks for stopping by, and hopefully we'll be able to hook up with you in one of the shows cool. somewhere. Great. And uh, stick around. we got much more Headbangers Ball. Nobody's seen this for a hundred years.